Welcome back to another rig review. And today I'm gonna to take a look at Apollo. You can see Apollo here and you can find it on Ramon's Gumro page. You have more images here. And it's also part of the Artemis and Apollo bundle. Artemis is gonna be a rig that I will review later on. But for now, let's take a look at Apollo. It's 20 pounds. Full disclosure, I got this for free to test out. And speaking of which, I'm gonna post this on Animation Buffet as well, where I post all kinds of rigs and reviews. So if you do have a rig you want me to take a look at, let me know and I will post it there and review it for my channel. All right. This is the rig. As you can see, it's kind of like a mannequin thing. It is not clothed, but you can see here as it has an option here to turn on something a bit more anatomically correct. Now this is blurred out, but just in case you care, there are controls to animate this, the <clears throat> longer part and uh, the hanging testes as well. They have controls so you can offset them <laughs> so they are anatomically correct, but for now, I will turn that off. Now, the model itself is super, super cool, has really cool deformations, it's very light. I'm very excited to show you this, so let's go, as always, at the bottom here. Main control, so you have here options to turn on spine controls, you can see this in the back here, here and here as well. There's uniform scale, which is very important, always good to know, and that's it for that. These are separate controllers here, so as always, for anybody that wants to do this, I don't know why, but maybe you want to, you can bring it down, and then the other controller, Gives you then a pivot through here and then the character can whee, fly through the world let's go to the feet here you have your main controller with a ball roll as such then you got toe heel roll in and out Some nice information there on the back and on the front there toes up and down nothing single just yet toes left and right to wiggle them like that just in case you do a push off like that to the side and that will give you some more options there, which is neat. I think that's a first. You have ball swivel, heel swivel, toe, foot squash. It's nice, look at that, very cool. And toe squash as well, very cool being separate. There's also stretchy limb, so as I have this now, this is a stretchy limb and you can turn this on off, of course. Going back, you have this one, which gives you bendies, embos there, as always, just like these, and you can do that. And here, all very fast, going back, you have the auto volume. So what that means is that when you do, let's say, take the leg here and you move it into that, but then you select this and you have auto volume, it will change the volume there. Now going back, as I said, for now, you can select this and say toe controls and the toe controls are on. Now, so a lot of rigs do this with the auto volume on this controller. Sometimes it would be kind of neat to just have this on here as well. Might as well. I mean, you have stretchy limbs on on. You might have as well have the auto uh, volume there. And as well as the tone controls. I would probably put the tone control here so that everything foot-wise is back there. I mean, in perfect preference, but I think that would be neat. Now, if you can go in here, you can see, whoops, you can see that you can rotate these. You can't scale, but you can translate these out. You also have one here, and that gives you that type of control, all kind of rotations, no scale. The foot itself has a scale option. And then as you move the foot, as always, as I test this, you have this version where the knee follows, but if you wanna have a knee follow like that, you can do this. Now, the awesome part too is that you have a pin. A lot of rigs are doing this now, and I love this. And you have a space switch for the foot. Again, Bembo's as here. Then up here, you have your Control here to react to move this out for reshaping. Then we get to the control of the root. So as you move this around, like that, you have again auto volume, you have offset. So you can see this here, you have an extra control, which is cool. Again, I like this trend that rigs are have adding offsets. I'm a big fan of secondary multiple controls in the outliner, or at least have an offset here. You also have an IKFK on your root. So when you do this, it actually switches to wah, 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 to FK. Now for IK, I'm a big fan of this. I'm a big fan of that control that is simplified. Basically you have a box here that you can rotate around and influence your chest like this. It's a bit more accurate given that you have this massive rib cage, but you animate a lot like this at work with an IK control for that, it's very cool. Global space, offset control. Again, multiple ones, offset top control on top of that and rotation pivot height. So lots of options in there, which is super cool. Then as we get to this, 
we have the hip control. Now there's a lot of deformation in the upper body, which is neat. And you can see how it really nicely deforms just there. It's just overall the deformation on this rig are very, very nice. You can not scale this, but you can move this around and you can see, again, really nice deformations in the squash and stretch. Now, again, this has the global space switcher. You have an offset control and a pivot height change. So a ton of options. As we get closer here, you can see, like I said before, for the uh, nether regions, you got a change there, which I shall not show you, but feel free to check it out. Then you have your stomach, but you can see, you can move this around, including here. You can, it's just nice how it just goes down to the rib cage there. That's really nicely done. And let me just go quickly, go back. If you do this here and you select your FK controls for the chest, there's nothing else in the uh, channel control, just to show you that. As we go up here, now we have here shoulder control. So you can move this around like that. You can also translate this and you can scale if you want to. Then it gives you controls here. So if I do this, nothing happens. It's because we are in IK. So you have that option and you have also, there's a scale option this way, but you have that hand. So again, you have a stretchiness. So stretchy limb on off on that, but you can move this around. And what I love about this here which not enough rigs have this. So this is a full IK hand. You can see this with the sticky IK wrist, but I'm not a big fan because you got to counter all that stuff. And it's, it's a big flag for IK arms. A lot of students, you got to point that out. What I love is you can change things here. Well, this is the overall switcher here, but if you go to your wrist control, you have the switcher here, bam, that switches it to an FK hand. So you move the IK around, but the hand is still there. Now you want to move it, you can still go up here and move your wrist around. I think that is super cool. And I would love every rig to do just that. You have your elbow. I mean, if you obviously bend in like this, you can do it like that. What this also gives you is the pin, which of course I love. And then back here, don't forget, you have an elbow control. So that is for your ah movement like that. Because as you look here on this control, there's no bows or no bendies. So this is your option for that elbow right there. Now, as you go here, you have your bendies there. So just make sure that you check out all the controls and now you have the bendies for the in-between and the changes. But if you ever have to do anything more with the elbow, that is the controller there. So that's that on that. Again, you have FK hands. And then if you go back here, you have the IK FK switcher here. So now we're turning into into the FK, which then gives you the scale. So just so you know, like all those options, sometimes they have no function unless the arm is selected to be in a certain way. Then you have that, including the scale in this direction as well. Like I said, auto volume in all the space switchers. Now let's get closer to here and you have the finger visibility on off. This is for your base control for the extra fingers. Of course, fingers you can move separately like this. You can also scale them in this direction. That is that. And then when you go this way, you can see that you also have that type of curving, which is really good for specific hand poses and fists and all kinds of stuff. And the FK wrist that you can also scale if you want. It's very, very cool. Now, as you go to here, again, you got your controllers there. This is really neat because you have, you can move this around like this, where it's kind of has like an overall breathing. And again, it's really nice how the rib cage expands. It's really well done and you want to do this separately, you can just have a chest breathing like this, full like that. Then you have a shoulder breathing like this and you have a belly breathing. It's very, very cool. Now, if you go back to the FK arms, when you select that arm and you move it up, it's just going to be that. There's nothing in terms of like an auto follow of the clavicle or anything. So you're going to do it with that. But again, really nicely deformed with the wrinkles through there. I'm just really impressed by all of that. Now you go to the neck. Now, this is the thing here, when you move your neck around like this, and I tried this before with all kinds of space switchers, the top part of the neck that you move like this will not follow like an FK. That's something that I would love to see change. So if you do this, right, and you switch between body and global and all that stuff, that will be dependent on how you move this here. You would think that if you change this to maybe either body or chest, that potentially would change anything in terms of how orientation is so i would love that when you move the lower part that then the upper part kind of goes with it 
like this. Now you can do whatever I just did. I mean, I'm selecting both at the same time, but sometimes I also like just have a complete control of the rig in terms of FK and not have uh, everything be IK. And that's also something for students uh, where students do a lot of IK heads or head align or whatever you want to call that. And uh, it just it just makes it very strange because as you move things around, you can see how there's almost like a gimbal on the head and that students don't always put enough time in it to counter that. So just as a as an FYI, but you have that option here. You also have options to do this, which to be honest, I think is a first. I talk about this every now and then. I have never seen a free rig or a paid rig do that. I'm not saying that I reviewed every rig, but this is really cool to get that kind of a it's almost like a Cardassian neck. We'd almost have a bit more here on the side, but it's really cool given that he is, you know, mostly all about no shirts on that you can have that detail in the body. I think that's super, super cool. You can also scale. So if you feel like this is a bit too long, you can reduce that neck if you want to. Now, if that's in the middle, you do have that. Wah, wah. And also because you have that, you can see that, like say, if you rotate this around, it just only moves this, which again, to me, is just weird. There's gonna be a lot of countering. I mean, this would be actually really fun for an alien type of rig, but again, it would be really neat to get more like an IK, there's more control in terms of uh, FK in there. Now, because I'm here, because it's awesome, you also have this. If you wanna do any type of swallowing, I mentioned in a couple of rigs that most rigs don't have, if any of rigs, have any swallow controls. And this is super cool to see that's there. Now, before we go to their face, again, go back here to the head. This is the head where you have all of this. And again, it would be cool to get also kind of a translate, to kind of just IK-ish, move that head around like that. So I would love to be a bit more involved in terms of IK, FK options. That being said here, let's select this again. You do have a squash and stretch just like that with this and a size option, that's weird, like that. Little bobble head there. But you can also go up here in that little one, and that one will give you the top squash and stretch. And again, really nice deformations. And you can see this when you go down to this one, you have this in home, 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 home. But you can see how far the deformations go. Whoops. You can see the top of the head, even parts of the hair. So it's all, this is gonna allow for a lot of very organic looking deformations and movements in the mouth, which is really, really cool. Now, let's go back in here because you have a lot of controls. You can select this main one here and that will give you that type of deformation. You can see where that pivot is. So it pivots fairly far from the back with a bit of a rotation there, but you can see all the stretchiness and you can see the compression as it starts to have some folds in there. But it's very interesting. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, it looks like there's a separate control in here. So watch out for that. And that gives you a bit of curvature in the chin, but you can also translate this around and you can also scale if you want to. Very cool, it's all very, very fast. Then you have an option here that you can move around just for this section. Let's put, pretend you do something with the tongue and the tongue just pushes out that shape or someone's eating, that's pretty neat. And you can scale this and of course you can rotate this as well. As you go to the back, you have an option here. You can see this is kind of a mover of the jaw as well. This is your secondary control with all the rotations and of course all that stuff, but I'm a big fan of secondary options, which is really cool. You have here your top lip here. And again, you can see how much the nose gets influenced, which is really cool. It gives you the lip roll through that. It gives you the puff and it gives you a press as well and a squetch as well. You might also have something where if you do this and I translate this off, this is going to break the rig, but maybe have more influence on the fall off. So if I do the upper lip that I actually, I don't want to change the nose. So if I have a certain shape and I want to really push this, yes, technically the nose goes with it, but maybe I just want to have a specific accent in the, in the lip that does not influence that. So I wish there would be a, a, an option there to maybe control the fall off. Now this is top and bottom. You got the same options for that. Then you got the main controls for the corners. You can see you can go back here or go up. No rotations and no scale. So you can just move this around, but you can see, I love this here. If you look at this side of that, right? As you go back here, you have really nice deformations with my scribbles here. <laughs> but it's very nice. It's very nice how that pushes the folds back here. You can go pretty far until you break it, but that's pretty impressive. I gotta say, it's very cool. 
very clean, very clean curves. And you got these throughout, you got the bigger shapes through there. And if you want something a bit smaller, you got those smaller shapes here to completely re-sculpt the form and lines of the mouth. It's very cool. As you go in here, so let me just go back and grab that jaw. Open this here. You have your, this here to show you, but you know, as you open them up, of course, it's gonna show the sections with teeth, but it's pretty cool. And you have also teeth follow yes or no. So that type of following where the teeth are not influenced, that's, I would love to have that for the nose. By opening this here, you can see the teeth. So you have moving teeth around as separate blocks here, you can see to kind of repose for certain lines. If you go back here, this is your main one for the tongue. And you have all those options, of course, to move the tongue around. Now, looking at this here, you can see that's the line somewhat hidden here to move, whoops, to move all of the teeth. So just that you see that. Now, let me do this and I'll grab the mouth again. So it's not so open. You can see it's really neat how it turns around. It's not a flat move. It kind of you can talk out of the side of your mouth. It's very cool. Again, beautiful deformations there. Now you have cheeks as well. You can move this around here. That was the jaw. Here on the side, you have that section through there that you can also scale to something real bit and rotate. And same thing for the up part, move this around. But as you go down here, you can see here, you got separate sections for nose just to move that around and there, and it looks like two, but it is one. That's one section through there. Gives you lots of options on the nose. So you have sneer and again, Nice wrinkles there on that. You can scale and everything. You also have an option here to flare these in the channel. As you go out, you do have options. You can see all the nice folding for this is very detailed. You have a bigger part of that. And again, you can see how it, where it stops, where you're gonna have that crease here, which is neat. And you can go inside for more control. Then you go up and then we get closer to the eye that has all those controls here. But let's continue with the nose. You have the overall nose here where the tip stays put, right? So you have this one, then you have this that grabs both. You have this for that side here, but you do have that middle one that grabs everything. And then watch out, this is the front part. That is the uh, the middle squetch. There's nothing with the nose, so it's not that. This is part of moving the head like this. It's punched in the face, leaning against something or just kind of moving it around for a ton of options. Look at that beautiful deformation there. So cool, absolutely love this. Let's go to the eyes. So you have your overall beep, 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 blink and you have a crease follow. So as you do this here, go into the channel so you can see how much you want the crease to follow. You get the same thing with the top, so you can do your blinks like this. Blinks of course are like that there, but let me continue. You got lots of shape controls for bigger sections, Smaller sections on the lower part here. You have here, closer section again to move all kinds of stuff in the skin. So as I showed this before, you have many, many options to make this very nice and squishy and organic. Movement for here, you have your overall brow here. And again, look at that, look at really nice. I love this here when you have the folds in the forehead. Love this. You just want to go in there and animate with that character. So cool. You got smaller ones mid ones and a bigger one on the side. Now going here, you do have eyes where you can move this around. So this moves the whole eye socket, including scale. And you have a blink, blink option, and then the blink height, which usually just shows you want to close in the middle or top or bottom, whatever you want to do, these are the options. Going to the back, you have separate tiny controls on the ears, up, uh, down and up and the overall ear here. And you can also scale if you want, someone's gonna listen or do. And as we go up here, I showed you, that was the head control with all of this on the side of the channel and your overall squetch like I showed. Then you got your eyes. So you got your eye mover like this, and then you can turn the aim off. So as you move this around, nothing is moving, which means that you're gonna go in here, select this, and move eyes around like that. It's not a rotation, it's a translate. You can scale if you want, because it's your eye iris. And in here, again, you move this around, and that's the pupil. So you can change this around, but that's for your aim. You do have fleshy eyes, which is interesting too. So as you move this around, right, you can see how the lids are following and there's deformation. 
but if I do that, you can see it's off. So you want no influence, you just want to look out like that. You definitely have the option. You got all your space switchers for your head. You got some eye constraint option there as well. And separate eyes, of course, you can move this all separate. You can see, you can see how the controls move on the rig. Everything is there. So you have all those options here. You can see the tooth options, the tongue in the back. You got the jaw, it's your body, head. And maybe that's one way to show it. If you decide to turn on the anatomically correct version, then there you go. This is an overall mover. This would be if someone is somewhat excited or not with scaling options and the two <clears throat> to move around. So maybe that's one way <laughs> to show you this. Love that it's called Jürgen. That is the name. Now, that being said, you do have those options and you can move this around mannequin style to whatever you want to do. I would love to see this for the butt cheeks as well. Given that this is a naked, somewhat you know mannequin type model and you're showing off all that cool stuff with all the nice deformations, I would love personally something where you can scale this, where you can have a bit more muscle play. I know this is a bit more um, you know, elaborate, but maybe an option that for bicep, for triceps or deltoid or something where you can push some of the muscles because there's some really nice deformation like I showed here when you do the breathing. So maybe that could be something that could be pushed further in terms of tensing of muscles, right? So you got for your legs, maybe calves, because you do have squash and stretch there. So anything maybe like that could be neat. And again, because it is not closed and you want to maybe sit the character down, maybe a flattening of the butt cheeks, like a squash and stretch. I think that could be kind of neat since many other areas have really nice options. Now you can also create your, your clothes, whatever, your wrap deformer. Feel free to add that so it's not just like this, but it could be a good athlete or something. I don't know. I'm very curious to see what people do. If you do use this rig and you are creating costumes and clothing and pants and, and whatever you have, be kind of neat. Let me know. You can post that in the comments of the animation if you post, or maybe this could be a separate post with just clothing for Apollo. That would be kind of neat to get kind of like a clothing collection there for this rig. As always, comments are open. If there's anything that's immediate, I will post that in my comment section for immediate updates. And if you want me to review your rig as well, as always, feel free to email me your rig and I will check it out. So very easy to pose and model. And the only thing would be if you do something like that, again, I would love to have some more uh, muscle control over there. It doesn't have to be an automatic flexing, but something where you can kind of push some of these areas just a bit more. It would be kind of neat to kind of just push all of that just a tad more. But very cool, very neat model. I'm a big fan of this. And as you go into the face and you want to model some of those things in there, you also have a studio library option there. So you got your facial options that are, you know, again, from angry to all kind of squishiness, but you can see the really nice deformations and expressions that you can get, <laughs> that you can get out of this model. So you have disgust, you have fear, gasp. You can see you can really push the squash and stretch op uh, options. Surprise. So I'm going to go for maybe that's a lot of stuff dialed in here. Arr, look at that. Arr. You have hands. You have lots of hand options as well. And in here in the mouth, you have mouth options as well. Now, I do have the other model as well. And you can see all the changes for that. They're for both rigs. So very cool. And that's it for my test and a tryout here for a pose. Feel free to download and check it out. Let me know what you think. Let uh, Ramon know of anything you wanted to change or not. He's going to be very active in terms of updates for this rig. If you don't want to miss any of those reviews, feel free to subscribe so that you can always check out what I post and review for my rig site and my general lectures and critiques and so on on my channel. And if you're still watching, as always, thank you for your patience. Urgh, urgh. Uh, let's go back to here. Thank you for watching. <laughs> All right. Thanks.